fold your bowlings back and get them to the front like they came when you picked them up. I don't want you messing up your bowlings, so get them back to the front. No, I want to show you something on the front of them. Just kidding. Okay. Get back to the front of your bowlings. And I want you to look at that little old zebra there. <laughs> is, that not, is that not so wonderful? <laughs> Such an illustration. I have a, I have a sign. I, just, I didn't notice it this morning. And it's funny how God leads you when you're working on a, a sermon or subject, you know, how God deals with you. To bring, I was sharing with, uh, I think it was Erica before the service started this morning. I was sharing with her. We were now working on some uh, stuff for a presentation this week at the church. And uh, uh, I, I, woke, I was sharing with her. I woke up uh, Thursday morning. In a sweat, I mean, literally sweat. And it's so good to see all you folks, especially you folks that are visiting with us. God bless you, heart. I love all of you. Have I told you lately that I love you? I love you, and I appreciate you and I love you so much. You're such a blessing. Even those that go off on vacation don't invite the pastor to join you. I love all of you so much. But uh, it, 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 it's good. But I, I, was, I woke up Thursday morning. Uh, really in sweat, just tizzy. Have you ever woke up and just really just anxious? And I was, I was worried about the sermon this morning. You know, I said, Lord, I'm going to forget. You know, I'm going to forget. I'm going to forget. So I, I know I'm going to forget. I'm not ready for Sunday night yet. I've still got to work. And I was just, I was just woke up full of anxiety. And, uh, and I said, I said to the good Lord, I said, Lord, I said, I've got a mess here. And uh, he said, uh, let's see if your sermon's true. Come on, preach. Huh? Yeah. Come on, preach. So he woke me up. Full of anger, <clears throat> sweating and worried, so I would try this thing out before I told you it worked. How's that? Okay. So what I'm getting ready to tell you works, guys. Oh, yeah. In 15 minutes, I was cool as a cucumber, and I'm still cool. If you don't believe it, come feel my hand. I'm just as cool <laughs> as a cucumber. Because God's word is true. Oh, yeah. And there are a oh, lot yeah. of us in here this morning that need to hear what the Lord has to say. I want you to listen. I want you to listen to this. This is from uh, a book called Believing God Day by Day, Growing Your Faith All Year Long by Beth Moore. Those he predestined, he also called. And those he called, he also justified. And those he justified, he also glorified. All of us who are believers in Christ have a calling. Now I want you to listen to what he's saying. All of us who are believers in Christ have a calling. All of us, not just preachers and deacons and choir directors. I am convinced God assigns our callings for a host of reasons, many of which serve a purpose in us, not just in those we serve. God is the master of multitasking. And I don't think, she says, that he'd be offended if I said that he... Now listen to this. And the Lord told me some things about some of you guys that you didn't think I knew. Okay? I'm a prophet. <laughs> no, well, he did too, but the reality is everybody has problems. Amen. Right? I'm telling you, there's not a person in their congregation that doesn't struggle with stuff. Some of you are married to your prophet, but I mean, you know, some of you don't. Anyway, I don't think he did. <laughs> I don't think he'd be offended if I said that he personally, and I'm not talking about Barbara either, okay? I don't think he'd be offended if I said that he purposely picks on something until he can get it to the surface. For example, Beth says, God knew that what he called me to do would force me, listen to what she says, to deal with the deeply embedded thorns of my past. How many of you have been hurt in your past? I'm telling you. Some of you shared with me some of your hurts. God forced me to deal with the deeply embedded thorns of my past. Therefore, our callings can be, at, listen to that, look at it, it's on the board. Our callings can be at stake if we're not willing to allow him to deal with our insecurities. Our callings can be at stake if we're not willing to let him deal with our insecurities. Now, my friends, this morning, I have a little sign, I, and this little old, this, the stress that we all endure, this little old thing on the front that Glenda put on here just is so appropriate. 
And, I, and Barbara has one on the fridge, and I started sharing with you a minute ago. God sends no stress that prayer and chocolate can't take care of. <laughs> Can I get an amen? amen? Hershey's is a holy ground. Okay? I'm telling you, folks, God doesn't, yeah, God doesn't intend for us to let stress dominate right. our lives. Right. Here's the reality. Right. Every one of us, every one of us have insecurities. Someone told me this week, and I was talking about uh, some things that happened in some lives this week, and I was in someone's home, we were talking, and during the conversation, they said that, they said that I, you know, I've trusted this difficulty I'm dealing with into the Lord's hands, and I have a peace in my heart, and I said, yes, but it's still like a cloud over your head, isn't it? And they said, yes, that's exactly what it is. I have a peace in my heart, but still it's there. You know, it's there. And if I'm not careful, that there will get itself infused into my life to the point that it right. causes me not to be able to fulfill the calling that God has called me to. Anxiety, anxiety is defined as a state of being, as a state of being uneasy or worried about what may happen or what is happening. It's a good definition, isn't it? Uh, 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 what, it, what may happen or what is happening. Listen to what God's Word says in Luke chapter 12, verse 25 through 26. He says, in Luke chapter 12, verse 25 through 26, And which of you, with taking thought, can add one cubic to his stature? Mm -hmm. Which of you, those of you that are, that are altitude challenged, how, by worrying about it, how can you make it? Oh, you can put on high heels. But I'm telling you, when you're barefoot and ready to go to bed, you can't add an inch you can't, to, your, to your statue. You can't do it again. God right. says, if you're not able to do that thing which is the least, God says that's not a big problem at all. He says, if you're not able to do that which is the least, why take ye thought about the rest? Then Paul says in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 32, and I'm pulling, you, you pastors, I'm pulling a portion of this verse out of context, so forgive me for that, but it doesn't do damage to the meaning. He said, but I would have you, I would have you to be free from cares. Or not have any cares, to be carefree. He says, that's what my desire for you is. And that's what <coughs> God's desire for you is. And that's what my desire for you and me as well is, that I be carefree. God has a calling, purpose, and a plan for your life. And your anxieties can derail that plan. So how, the issue then becomes, how do we deal with those anxieties? Does God just tell us not to worry? And then let us work it out on our own. No, he gives us a formula. He tells us how it'll work. Folks, and trust me, after 6 o'clock Thursday morning, I can tell you, personal witness, hey, it works. Oh, yeah. I'm telling oh, you, yeah. it works. Oh, yeah. So I want to look at that scripture this morning that we have, Philippians chapter 4, verses 4 through 9. I want you to take, <laughs> take your Bible and look at it. I'm going to read you. This is not the King James Version. This is a different translation, but I like the wording in it a little bit better. So... Let me use it. Rejoice. Now I'm talking about Philippians chapter 4, uh, verse, that says verse 6 and 7. I changed it after I sent you that, Greg. I want to start at verse 4. So uh, you folks look on up two verses above to verse 4. Rejoice in the Lord always. <laughs> when you feel good, when you feel bad, when things are going good, when they're not going good. And again I say rejoice. Yes, Let your reasonableness be known to everyone. The Lord is at hand. Yes. Do not be anxious about anything. Wow. Is that a suggestion? Sounds like a command, doesn't it? It's coming from God. Coming from God through the pen of the apostle. Do not be anxious about anything. The Lord's at hand. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God and the peace of God which passeth all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, now he's given us, he's given us a filter. Let me just speak to this as I read it because it's not part of the message and it's not the focal point, but, but he's given us a filter for our minds. You wonder why you have problems thinking things you ought not to think and saying things you ought not to say and doing things you ought not to do, it's because you're not using the filter uh, that God gives you for your mind. Finally, brothers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, 
whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think about these things. What you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and the God of peace will be with you. Now, there you go. In this passage of Scripture, we have, we have a formula for that. Now, let me, let me tell you, if you know in your Bible, let me give you really, really quick, because I'm wanting to get to something else. But let me give you, in this fourth chapter of the book of Philippians, you have the greatest passage that there is in the Bible for your provisions. Verse 19, but my God shall do what? Supply all exactly, all. supply all of your needs according to your needs. According, no, according to His riches and glory. The greatest passage for provision in the Word of God is found in this fourth chapter of the book of Philippians. The greatest passage, the greatest passage for power is found in this chapter also. Verse 13 of Philippians chapter 4 says, I can what? How? Through God who strengthens me. The greatest verse for power. And not only provisions and power, but the greatest verse for peace, which is verse 6, which is what we're going to work on today. And this passage of Scripture, verse 6 and 7, is one of three great mind-stabilizing passages of Scripture there is in the Bible. There are three passages of Scripture in the Bible that provided you don't have a chemical imbalance, and you don't need, and you don't really have some deep-rooted problems where you need to go visit Miss Dana's office. When you, when you're, if you're sound, you know, there are three great passages of Scripture in the Bible that will stabilize and normalize any person's mind if you'll apply those things and take them on a regular right. basis. This is one of them. The other one is uh, uh, the 23rd Psalm, and the other one is 2 Timothy chapter 1, verse 7. It takes care of everything that a Christian has to struggle with. This is one of them. The 23rd Psalm is the other one, 2 Timothy 1 and 7. Use those three passages of Scripture, and within a short period of time, God has promised us in His Word that you'll become, well, as normal as you can become, you know. So with that said, let's move into our focal point for today, which is our uh, passage, verses uh, four or verses five and six. Anxiety. Listen to this statement. I didn't. I, this is not original with me. I don't know where I got it, but it's true. Anxiety has its roots. Well, it's tied to these three passages of scripture I'm talking about. Maybe it's original with me. Anxiety had its roots. It's wonderful to get old. You forget what you forgot, and it don't matter so you can quote anybody playing for you on, you know? Okay, anxiety has its roots in fear, unbelief, and or our attempt to play God. I can fix that. How many times have I heard you say, I've heard you folks, some of you right here say, I said to God, I've got this. Wow. That is a really, really, really not smart way to make a statement. I've got this, God. Okay, I'm good. Yeah. No, I, I'm, I'll tell you. It's a dangerous attitude. Playing God, unbelief or fear, and that's the roots of our anxiety. So let's cure, let's cure this anxiety. Scripture clearly tells us, first thing we do, verse 6, what? Pray. First thing we do is pray. Right. Verse 6. Yeah. That word prayer is, comes from the Greek word for suke, and it implies that in the process of praying, the nature of that prayer is personal worship of God. Every morning as I begin my prayer for the last, since Lee was in high school, and he's old now. I mean, look at that head. He's old, you know. That, and since he was in high school, every morning since uh, that time, whatever year that was, <laughs> I have begun my prayer, one of the, my regiments of prayer, is as I begin praying, Lord, I, and I start worshiping Him. But you see, it's just a spin-off. Jesus told His disciples, said, when you pray, pray this, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. What He's saying is when you start praying, you worship God. That's how you start it, man. You start worshiping God. And I say, Lord, I just want to worship You and praise You because of Your power. There's nothing, I know that there's nothing more powerful than you are, and there's nothing to come into my life today that's more powerful than you. Father, I just want to thank you for your knowledge. I just worship you and praise you for your knowledge. I just thank you, God, that you know everything that's going to happen today, and I don't have to worry about it. I want to thank you for your presence. Lord, I just want you to know that I just worship you and praise you because I don't care what happens today. It's going to happen to me in your presence. Your presence, your power. I want to know, God, I just want to praise you and thank you because you're faithful. I know that you're going to do exactly what you said. Your presence, your power, your favorites. 
You know everything that's going on. You know how to prepare the way before me. Lord, I just, and sometimes I just get carried away thanking him for who he is and worship him as I start my prayer in the morning. That's exactly what Paul's saying. Pray as an act of worship when you begin your prayer. Come into him with an attitude of adoration. Some of you folks come up to me. Uh, you appreciate me, you love me, and respect me. Most of you, some of you. But you don't adore me. I mean, there's a lot of difference in how you approach me and how you approach your wife of 51 years or 52 that you worship and adore. I mean, there's a lot of difference in that, guys. And God says, and Paul says in this writing, when you come to him, come in an attitude of worship, just adoring him, man. And if you can let his Holy Spirit get into your heart what he's done for you, good Lord, how can you help but just adore him? Sometimes you just want to fall down on your face and just cry and praise him a while. Amen? Oh, yeah. I'm telling you, God is so sweet and so good. So you come to him with an attitude of worship and adoration. God, God must be the center. Right. That prayer. That's why Jesus said, when you pray, pray our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. So you come to it, has to, God has to be the center. And when the crisis come in your life, then pray as an expression of worship because of who God is. Amen. I want you to listen to what Oswald Chambers said. He says, have I been with you so long? He quotes a passage of scripture, John 14 and 9. I love this. He says to Philip, have I been with you so long, and yet have you not known me, Philip? Could God not say to us this morning, how many of you, how many of you have been born, born again for 50 years or longer with me? Raise your hand. Then, then may I say to you, have you been with me this long, and you don't know me yet? What are you doing getting anxious, you 50-year-plus seniors? I'm talking about spiritually 50. What about 10 years? What about 5? I mean, folks... Jesus said, what? You've been with me so long and you don't know me? You don't know me yet? Our Lord says, quote my Lord Chambers, our Lord must be repeatedly astounded at, our, uh, at us. Astounded at how unsimple we are. It is our own opinions that make us dense and slow to understand. But when we are simple, we are never dense. We have discernment all the time. We want to be fully aware of what God is doing in us. Listen to this. We want to be fully aware of what God is doing to us, but we cannot have complete awareness and expect to remain reasonable or balanced in our expectation of Him. If all we are asking God to give us is experiences, oh, oh, that light, service last Sunday, wasn't it sweet? Holy Spirit is all over this place, just like warm gravy. You know, I'm telling you, it was sweet here last Sunday. Well, if we come in expecting that same thing today, it'd be great if we did, but if we don't, it doesn't matter. If our awareness, you know, if all we're asking God to give us is experiences and the awareness of those experiences is blocking our way, we hurt the Lord. The very questions we ask Jesus because they're not a question of a child hurting. Let not your heart be troubled, John 14 and 1 and John 14 and 27. Am I then hurting? Let not your heart be troubled. Did you get that? How many, every, every funeral, Pastor Don, David, that we do, I guarantee you somewhere in that truck, in that funeral, that verse is quoted. And most pastors have memorized first John, or memorized John 14, 1 through 6 because we all use it in all of our funerals. Let not your heart be troubled. Am I then hurting Jesus by allowing my heart to be troubled? Mm. If I believe in Jesus and His attributes and I'm living up to my belief, am I allowing anything to disturb my heart or am I allowing any question to come in which any questions to come in which are unsound or unbalanced. I have to get to the point of the absolute and unquestionable relationship that takes everything as it comes from Him. God never guides us at some time in the future, but always here now. Realize that the Lord is here now and the freedom you receive is immediate. Amen. Let not your heart be troubled. Watch my knee. Watch my knee says this. Has it dawned upon me yet that the Spirit of God within me is a person? I am but an earthen vessel, but in that vessel I carry a treasure of unspeakable worth, even the Lord of glory. All the worry and fret of God's children would end if their eyes were open to the wealth of resources that they carry with them. Resources sufficient for every demand that they will ever meet. Amazing. I'm telling you what we have and how we worry. 
Wherefore, 1 Peter 4, 19 says, Wherefore let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to Him in well-doing as unto a favor. You may have difficult times, and God often uses those difficult times to mold us and make us into what He wants us to be. Amen. Now, number two, right heard. First of all, pray as an act of worship. Secondly, he says, with supplication. With prayer and supplication. May I tell you what that means? It means to beg. It means to beg. That's what it means. Literally. That's as good a translation from the Greek as you can get. Prayer, prayer is to be need-centered. Acknowledge your inadequacies. What does the Bible say? Let your request be made known unto God. Amen? Tell him what you need. Here you go. I just can't handle this, Lord. I don't know what to do. Right, right. It wasn't until the children of Israel got to the banks of the Red Sea, mountain on this side, desert on that side, no way to run, the army behind them, when they couldn't do anything else, God showed up and showed out. That's right. I'm telling you, folks. Let God know specifically what you need. Right. At your point of helplessness, <laughs> God is about to do great things in your life. God's strength is made perfect in weakness. Right. In weakness. Amen. I remember my first trip to Haiti. I, I, I don't have time to chase a lot of rabbits or give you a lot of stories this morning. Because I've got a lot of other things I want to do when I get through preaching. But my first trip to Haiti, I, I put me in my, I knew God had led me to go. We were pastoring at Trinity. You remember, lady and mom? And, and I, I, put me a, I put me an envelope in my desk drawer. And I said, God, I know that you're leading me to do this mission trip. And I'm going to depend on you to oh, put the you. money that I need in that envelope before time for me to go. So I'll have the money that I need to go. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, by golly, it kept getting closer. And I kept reminding the Lord that envelope is in my mental desk drawer. Do I need to move that thing? <laughs> There's nothing in it. And there's nobody giving me any money toward this. You're not giving me any extra money. There's not any bills being paid. I mean, Lord, that envelope is still empty. Week before, week before, the envelope was still empty. I said, Lord, what are we going? What are you up to here? I'm gonna make a fool out of myself and you too, telling everybody I'm going and you're gonna supply the needs. The day before I left, so happy. The day before I left, the plant manager at Vermont American up in Boone called me and he said, Pastor, come to my office. I want to talk to you about uh, that trip that you're going on. Hey, long story short, when I left, he said, by the way, the group that I meet and pray with once a week, we, we collect money. And he said how much money he had is exactly the amount I needed. Oh, he yeah. said, you know anywhere we oh, could yeah. use that in missions? Oh, yeah. Come on, preacher. Yeah. Let me tell you, folks, when you feel like you don't have any place to go, or anything to do, that's when God's getting ready to show you. Right, bro. He'll show you something. So there we were. Point of interest. God, don't ask God for a little help. Just let Him take care of it all. It's not God in you that's going to do it. It's God that's going to do everything. Do not worry. Hey, it's not me and God that's going to do it. And some of you folks say, God's using you greatly. God can use a donkey. He's proved it over and over, guys. I'm telling you. It's God gets the credit for everything that's done. Know who He is. And believe who he is, that he will live, listen, that he will live out who he is in your circumstances. Coming to him pleases him. You don't have to worry. God can handle it. If he can't handle it, right, you're in trouble, right. man. Oh, he yeah. can't be handled. Finally, closing with this. <clears throat> he says, with prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving. Thursday morning, I prayed. <laughs> Come on, man. And I supplicated. <laughs> I supplicated. <laughs> and then I said, Lord, I just want to thank you. Oh, yeah. 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 And the peace that passes understanding came over my heart. He oh, said, Lord. I've got this. Amen. I said, we are in good shape now. When he says, I've got this, you know that you got it by the tail, guys. Yeah, when God takes it. over, when he God takes it, you know you've got it. And he, I, don't, I don't care what you're handling this morning or what you're going through or what you're worried about. Let me tell you, he can take care of it. That's right. And he's got it if you'll just let him have it. Yeah. Thanksgiving. God, I just want to thank you that you'll take care of it. This is an expression of resting the consequences and circumstances in the hands of Almighty God. Give God praise and thanksgiving when all is bad. That's true praise and worship. Anyone can praise him when it's great. But praise Him when it's bad because oh, yeah. God's still God and He's still on the throne. Oh, yeah. Well, that's pretty much it.
John said we were predestined before the foundation of the world to be conformed to the image of God. Amen. You can expect those hardships to form us, mold us, and shape us into the likeness of His Son. It is given to us to suffer in the name of Jesus, so don't expect life to be a bed of roses. That's Remember right, what I've told you. This is all the hell you'll ever have to experience. Because right. when you die, it's heaven for you from now on, baby. Oh, yeah. I mean, it's all good. Oh, what are the results? Verse 7. <clears throat> he says, And the peace of God, oh, the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Yeah. Pray as an act of worship. Prayer, make it need-centered, and then pray as thanksgiving. Folks, try it. Trust me. It'll work. Monday morning, oh, yeah. my phone rang before daylight. Anytime a pastor's phone rings before daylight, it's not a good sign. On the other end was Eric Ollis. He said, Pastor, <clears throat> he said they called me from the hospital and uh, asked me to come on down and bring them on. He said, I want you to meet me at the hospital. Got to the hospital, y'all folks already know, I went up and did his funeral yesterday, the day before yesterday, right? Went up and did his funeral Friday. Or helped his funeral, wasn't known to me, there's two other pastors. We were standing there in the room, Eric's dad had already gone to be home. The time we all got to the hospital, I got there before they did. The time we got to the hospital, no, at about the same time. But when the time we got to the hospital, he had already gone on to be with the Lord. Already, already moved residents. From CMC to glory. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We were standing there talking. Me and Eric and his mom and uh, Laura, just uh, just us uh, three, or four of us counting me in. Eric said, Pastor, listen to what he said. He said, I don't understand this. I said, What are you talking about, Eric? I thought he was talking about why his dad died so young, you know, 60 some years of age. He's young to me anymore. And, uh, I said, what are you talking about, Eric? He said, I ought to be all to pieces. He said, I ought to be bawling my eyes out. And he said, I've got a peace in my heart. He said, I yeah. can't understand it, Pastor. Oh, yeah. He said, I don't know why I have such a peace. He said, I may come apart later. But he said, man, he said, I've got a peace. It makes no sense. I said, a peace is beyond understanding, something like that? He said, yeah. He said, it's a peace that's beyond yeah. understanding. That's, right. that's what God does for you. Oh, yeah. Now, I assure oh, yeah. you this morning, dear friends, I don't know what you're facing. I don't know what difficulties or uncertainties or anxieties in your life, what elements are that are causing those. I can assure you <clears throat> that the most priceless treasure that God left us on this earth, His Word, His written Word, right. this is the most valuable yeah. thing on the oh, face yeah. of earth. That this Word that He sent us, left us, says, you're going to be okay. Oh, yeah. You, you just worship him and adore him. You tell him exactly what you need, and you thank him for taking care of you. Right. And he said in Romans 8, 28, that everything that happened in your life will work out for your good. Amen. You can trust him. Tim, let's have a 